what may be a reoccurring feature, it's going to be in or out. So are you like in yeah. or out on a couple things that are happening in the real estate world? How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Sean and Matt Show. My name is Matt. That is Sean, and welcome to our show. Sean, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about a new report that says home sales have a lot more to fall. They are going to fall further in 2023, it says Goldman Sachs. We're going to be talking about inflation and Gen Z and millennial renters and how that's affecting the rental market, the sales market, and the overall real estate market. And then we're going to finish it off with um, what may be a reoccurring feature. It's going to be in or out. So are you like in yeah. or out on a couple things that are happening in the real estate world? These are kind of offbeat, unique, um, kind of hot take type properties and, and type trends. So that'll be cool to get into. But let's get into more of some... Depressing news. I, I don't know how, how else to say it. I mean, every show we're like, "Hey, how home prices are going to go down again?" Jeez, I mean, it was a, it was a lot more fun when we were talking about how crazy prices were going, and now it's completely opposite. Yeah. So a new paper released this week by Goldman Sachs predicts that home sales will fall to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 4.7 million in the fourth quarter. So essentially, what what this all means is that home prices are going to drop um, about 12 percent from july's mark so right now we're in uh september 1st um they're going to drop another 12 percent and then the outlook doesn't get much better sean there's a graph in the article that shows shows a, a lot of red line well it shows one red line and it's it's not going in the direction that um home sellers would like it to go in maybe maybe home buyers see this and are like oh my god yes like I, i've been waiting you know years a for this. a lot of people have well yeah. I, I mean how many people and we can get into the article now but like how many people have you talked to in the past five years 10 years maybe since 2010 where they're like well i heard there's going to be a recession in 2013 or i heard in 2015 price oh no 20 set you know what 2020 price are going to go how many of these people are out there i think a lot of them are out there but you know the moral of the story is that goldman sachs is saying not only are prices going to continue to go down in 2023 but they're going to kind of flatline all of next year yeah it's so hard to decipher all right and i've been reading articles and there's so many articles out there that are just doom and gloom like we said but there's a lot of people that are saying this is the most confusing market that we have ever been in because we just don't know where things are going. So, you know, when I look at, um, I was looking at trends the other day and and zip codes around DC area, and um, they were still saying that I guess the buyer ability or the the um, was still hot, right? So even though places are taking longer to sell, there was still a demand, right? And 22201 Clarendon area was was one of the hottest zip codes that was still showing signs of, of a lot of buyer demand. Um, and when you look at some houses in the area, they're still selling like crazy. So it's like, it's, it's very pocketed, but as a general rule or as um, a whole country, it's, it's not good, right? And I've been talking to real estate agents, I've been talking to stagers, I've been talking to uh, lenders, and it's all the same story. We're slow, um, nothing going on. Uh, there's not much activity. Um, so the real telling thing is going to be, right? We're coming out of August. August is typically slow. It's a lot slower than it's been because we are used to so, such a height of activity. But what we're really going to be judging right now is from just after Labor Day until mid-October. What this market does in the next 45 days will tell us what the next year is gonna be like. You know, if if these things are not moving and everything starts coming down and property starts sitting on the market a lot longer, which I'm hoping doesn't happen, then that's going to be a telltale sign of, yeah, we might see a little bit of an uptick in spring, but overall that 2023 is going to be probably difficult. You're saying that these these things are not good things, right? You, that's what you're saying. It's it's not it's not a good outlook. Well, Sean, on Arrow now there was just a, a poll this morning that said. 
um, you know, Arlington home sales have have dipped. You know, I think I, I read a stat where the average listing price for the 400 properties that are currently on the market is around like $900,000, right? Like the average, just because there are so many like, you know, two and $3 million properties that, you know, outweighs like the $200,000 properties. Whereas like the sold, you know, values are closer to like uh, 580, like as like a median sales. So like the median sales price for um, July, 2021, this isn't like year round, but just July, 2021. And, and that number, you know, dropped about, um, let's see a couple, uh, it was, it was up, let's see, 13,000. And then, um, July, 2022 price was down 3000 from that same point a year before. So that all, all that's to say is that this year sales price in Arlington have dropped M like just, just, uh, just by a hair. And so the poll was, is a dip in home prices or a pause in price growth an overall good thing or bad thing, 47% of the voters said good, even if it's more significant drop. And then another 16% of the voters said good, provided that it's only a slight dip or a slight pause. So Sean, now we're at 65% um, of these voters. And we don't know if these voters are, you know, wanting, you know, maybe they're buyers, maybe they're looking to get in, but 65% of these voters in the Arlington area have said that, yes, this is actually a good thing. Yeah. Well, and here's the thing we have, the, the prices have gone so far so quickly and that was the problem. So people are always like, uh, whenever I did an analysis on this before I go back to 2008 and I'd say, all right, well, what's the difference between 2008 and what happened there compared to now? But what, what the weird thing is here is there is a lot of room for these prices to drop because we saw artificial just rises in prices because of this pent up demand because of the pandemic, right? And so the prices, the people, when we were writing contracts, we were like, this is ridiculous. They're going $100,000, $200,000 over asking price. That pushed these prices up so quickly. It was absurd. So naturally, there has to be, once this starts cooling, it's going to cool quickly, right? Because we've overpaid for two years, for two years, you know? So it's going to be... I think pretty significant in the drops because of the fact that it went up so quickly. And then the interest rates went up so quickly. And then now there's fears of recession and everybody's worried about the economy. So it's three different factors right there, right? Prices rose so quickly, fear of recession and uh, interest rates rose so quickly. Those are three pretty big factors that can cause a huge dip. Um, compared to, you know, back in the day, it was bad mortgages, right? Yeah, whole different thing, but still had a really big effect on the market. Now, these three things added together are pretty darn significant and they could have a huge effect. Now, what people can't get used to is the fact that, you know, we just saw a really good, um, just came out of a really good thing. So they can't think they're going to get the same price all the time. We've got to watch this market to see where it's going. But, you know, we're going to have to tell sellers that, listen, that market's gone. Um, and now we have to find the new normal. Where is that new normal? And every month is probably going to be different. Just as it was, as we were going up, we're like, shoot, where should I price it? We price it at the top of the market. It goes $100,000 above that. Now we're on the decline. We're on the backside of that. You know, what we're not talking about is interest rates because, you know, a, an $800,000 home today is not the same as an $800,000 home six months ago. Right. You know, but if if sales prices go down, that doesn't tell, you know, the whole picture, right? It, it just, it could tell that interest rates have gone up and now that same buyer who's looking at $800,000, well, maybe their monthly mortgage, monthly payment just went up like $1,000 and they can no longer afford that. So I, I think that the, the sales price, you know, is more of just a, a spot in time of what is the the monthly mortgage for that buyer because buyers don't care about the sales price. They care about the monthly payment and the interest rate. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. And those now think about if you were in the market and like, I'll use myself as an example in the house that I bought, I, had I tried to buy that now, there's n absolutely no way I would probably be buying a few hundred thousand dollars below what I bought. Right. Um, in today's market with a 5%, almost 6% interest rate, I have 2.65%. There's no way that I'll ever get that again. You know, maybe, I mean, but 
just think about that difference, right? It's a complete difference. So people have to start thinking about what their monthly mortgage is. And that is what is going to tell where the prices should fall. Um, the fact that we've gone up in, you know, three, six months by two and a half percent in interest rates, that gives you right there, what's the difference in value? And I've done an analysis on that. It's pretty significant, you know, in, in some of these properties, it could be 60, 70, 80, hundred thousand dollars just based on the interest rate value alone. So jumping back into the article, the expected decline in demand, um, through the end of the year is almost driven entirely by existing home sales. So Goldman Sachs says that sales of newly built homes would be unlikely to fall much further than where they've, they've already fallen. So that's, that's interesting. That's the, the new home builds, because now we're seeing new home builders start offering more and higher commissions to agents, which is always a telltale sign that maybe they're struggling for buyers. Yeah, exactly. But I wonder why that is, right? So new homes will stay. And I was thinking, all right, well, maybe that's because a lot of those homes are already under contract. They're just being built and then they'll settle. So they're already stuck in their price, right? Whereas some of the newer construction that, believe me, I worked in the new construction sector. I was a sales agent when it was tough. And, um, I, I think the the sellers of those are, are really tough and uh, they stick with their their dollar. You know, there's big money behind it. They can hold off and hold and wait, you know. Um, but it's interesting to see. I don't know. I don't know what the um, correlation there is, why that would stick higher. But thinking maybe people are already under contract on those, you know. Yeah. So what I'm taking away is that Goldman Sachs is essentially predicting that prices are going to, quote unquote, stall completely from 2022 to 2023. Obviously, this is a nationwide study. So, you know, it's going to be different in, in different metro areas. Sure. But, you know, I, I think, again, the number one, maybe another takeaway is if you're a seller, I mean, go on to Redfin, go on to Zillow, see what the monthly payment is, you know, at that interest rate, and then compare like what you think your house is worth. Because I, I think we really need to take into consideration that interest rate versus, you know, the homes. Because if you're like, or if you're like, yeah, my home is worth like nine hundred thousand dollars. Well, maybe your neighbor got nine hundred thousand dollars, but now you're asking, you know, fifteen hundred dollars more simply because, you know, per month, simply because the interest rate is that much higher. That's right. Yeah. So it's completely changed, and you can't you can't go there anymore. All right, let's move on to our next article. This also comes to us from Inman.com. Millennial and Gen Z renters are getting walloped by inflation, um, says a new study uh, re uh, released today by Redfin. And essentially w what it states is that their Gen Z and millennial renters, let's see, ha they had a personal inflation rate of 11.6, whereas the rents rised 13.5%. Um, in year over year for July. So essentially the rents are rising higher than the inflation rate. So it's it's kind of like a, a game of catch up for them to to catch up and their dollar is, is not going further. And um, what they go on to say is that, you know, these people are just starting off in work. They don't really have the salary. They have the student loans and, you know, they obviously want to live in, in the big city. And how do you begin to even approach home ownership, let alone affordable rents when we're seeing rents, you know, skyrocket across the country. Yeah. And that's the crazy thing that's happening, right? You see the housing market, the sales stall, right? And, and they're starting to slow down. Prices will start dropping, but the rental market is still insane. And so what all these buyers that are no longer buying, they're going into the rental market and they're pushing up prices. So that's why you see that the 13% is higher than the actual inflation rate because there's demand, right? And that demand is pushing it up. These young kids are, these Gen Zers are getting into um, their first place, their first place, you know, away from home and they're getting crushed. And not only that, when you when you rent into one of these big buildings, you get in for the first year, they, they say, all right, we'll give you your first month free or, you know, they give you all these incentives. And <clears throat> my nephew's one of them. He just moved out to Salt Lake City. Um, and you know, they give them a free month or something, right? And that's what they do. Once you, they have you in, then they're like, all right, Matt, you've been here a year. Your rent's going to go up $400 a month. And you're like, what? Like I can't afford $400 a month, but I don't want to move. So, all right, I'm stuck in this pickle. Do I move or do I stay? You know? And so it just keeps going. And there's a lot of people that are pushed out because of that increase. You got Lindsay'd. So we did. call that. 
I, yeah, well, she just she just got her new rate. She got for Lindsay. a studio in Boston. Did is, is did over, she fight him on it? What happened there? She is, yeah. It's like twenty two fifty. What was it last year? Um, it was like high ones. So crazy. it went up like three hundred dollars in a year. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so uh, millennials, you know, they're they're spending over a quarter of their income on rent. I feel like most people are spending over a quarter of their income on rent, mortgage. So that doesn't really yeah. stand out to me. Well, if you think about it, I mean. The, well, yeah, I mean, the, the lender's not going to give you above what a 48% 40 ratio, right? Of debt to income ratio. So when you add all your debts in, yeah, I mean, 25% is probably going straight to your house for sure. Yeah. And, and maybe the, I haven't been following the Biden student debt relief too closely. Maybe that will help out some future homeowners with student debt relief. And I, I've always thought that there's going to be this huge changeover, right? Uh, generational real estate, right? Uh, the baby boomers that are going to be moving on and going to be selling properties to the younger generation. That has that happened? That hasn't happened yet. The the uh, the baby boomers, because millennials, they're not buying houses as much as um, the Gen Xers, and and they're not buying as as many houses as the the baby boomers own right now. So. Yeah. I it's, it's what, so like weird. when is that turnover going to happen because it still hasn't happened and now you have millennials that are like in their 40s which is crazy to think about yeah it's so funny I was reading this other article and it was about population growth and whatever in Virginia and, and they were actually saying that the population in northern Virginia is falling and I, I don't know if that's true or not but but I was thinking like why would that be because I just feel like there's so many more people here how can it be falling right and then I thought about this I said all right well who's moving out right so it's the older two people moving out, right? So it's usually that the, this older fit couple moving to their retirement area, right? So south, let's say. And then who's moving in? One Gen Zer, one. So all right, so it's two out, one in. But it's still one household. So that's what you've got to think about: how many households are are moving, right? So if you did an equation on that and said, all right, well, one house is moving, but it's two people, but one house is moving in, but it's one right, person, right? Right. And so that's why I was like, all right, maybe that makes sense because there's always such a demand in this area. And if you look at all of the apartments in the area, how many are there? And the, like, they're filled, they're, they're getting filled, right? And it's like, all right, well, why is that? I'm assuming, and it's because the the young crew is coming in um, and then soon enough, they will, um, you know, get married, have kids, and then take over the houses, right? So it's always that move and, you know, move up, move up kind of thing. Yeah, you have a lot of Gen Z renters, millennial renters that are attracted to maybe a, a tech job in the area. And then you have, you know, older adults that have lived here their whole life that are maybe going to retire to Florida or Snowbird or do something like that. And, you know, obviously with rising rents and with remote work increasing, you know, I, maybe you have less um, Gen Zers and millennials moving in as you do uh, you know, baby boomers moving out. Yeah. Just a hypothesis. All right, let's move on to our third topic, Sean. This is going to be, are you in or out yeah. on these three um, little articles that I pulled up? So article number one comes to us from realtor.com. Would you dare to purchase a haunted and affordable hotel in Wisconsin? Sean, let me give you the details. Humbird, Wisconsin. There's a bar and hotel for sale. You're already in when I said I'm bar. In. Yeah. He's in. Sean's in. <laughs> Haunted bar? Sure. So dating back to 1869, there's a bar, a six-room hotel, and a residential space on the market for a whopping $279,900. Completely you, in. Are you in I'm totally or in out? on this, and this is why. I'm airbnb in that to... Um, to the haunted people, the people that want that experience, right? Look Don't at that bar. A, that's killer. You can play some Kino. They got that's some slots killer. over there. I'm totally in on this. What I wonder, you know, I mean, like think about the the demand for people that want to get the scare, that want to have that experience. I think it's out there. I'd buy it. Speaking from experience of someone who's uh, doing some work to an old house, you. You're gonna have a I lot. Of no work. <laughs> you're, you're gonna have a lot of expenses. You don't need to update. Don't update it. But yeah. you know, look look behind the walls, and you might have some, not only some ghosts, but maybe some electrical issues. All right. So Sean's in on the Wisconsin hotel. I think I am too. Um, maybe not in the winter time. Okay. Number two. This comes to us from Washingtonian. Sean, are you in or out on who wants to buy a historic lighthouse? In the Chesapeake Bay, let me give you the details. 
Bidding for Maryland's Hooper Island Lighthouse starts at $15,000. You can own your own lighthouse dating back to 1902. Sits in 18 feet of water and rises 63 feet above the bay. It does come with a little few caveats. You can't live there. The U.S. government is looking for a steward. You'd have to provide access to the U.S. Coast Guard as it's an active lighthouse. You have to ensure it meets historic preservation. You won't own the land (laughs) below the lighthouse, only the structure. And you have to come to an agreement with the Navy on stipulating when you can and cannot access the lighthouse. I think that's a quick absolute no. You're out. I would not buy it. And, you know, at first, before you told me all that stuff, I was like, all right, cool. Again, Airbnb it, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then you scrolled down and I saw the picture and I'm like, that's in the water. No, it's, it's not even it's, on the land. No, like, it's, you're in the water. That's a scary looking thing. Yeah, There's, that's I'm, That is worth, I would be more scared on that thing than I would be in the haunted house for sure. That yeah. That is just spooky. And spooky. You imagine like you wake up and the water's just <laughs> no like way. right outside your window. No, Crazy. gives me chills, dude. But like, what if you could, right? Because there was that one lighthouse in, um, that was on land in California yeah. that I think was an Airbnb or we had talked about that. That's where I was in. Right? Okay. If it was that. But, but if you have to take a boat to get to it. No. You're out. No, okay. it's kind of, kind of creep, creepy. All right. Let's move on to the third topic of the in or out segment. Sean, this comes to us from the Instagram handle at houses. And what it shows is a stairwell that is made of glass and the design crew is taking a hammer and what looks like a a little nail or some sort of device and they are breaking the glass to give the cracked, like like a shattered glass look for the handrail, you know, uh, wall separating. So you're walking up the staircase and you have a glass cracked aesthetic. Sean, are you in or out? This it's So it's three layers of glass and the middle is cracked in between the front and the back. I'm out. I'm you're out. out. I like, I, it's a cool look. It could be a cool look, but man, after I spend that much money on glass, I'm keeping Why it. do you have to break the glass? Can't you just get glass that looks broken yeah like, can't you is, like, is that like could you imagine thing? if you screw that up when you're hammering it like that like the, he's the guy's literally on on video hitting it and it shatters but anything could go wrong there you know what if the whole thing fell down you just spent thousands of dollars believe me i've gotten a glass door on a shower and it was three thousand dollars that right there is probably 12 grand of glass right and you're shattering it hell no, no i way. think I think if I lived here and like I stubbed my toe or like I was carrying something and I like accidentally and there's like one spider crack, might just then take, I'm doing it. I'm taking right. a hammer to it. All right, like yeah. what can we do here? But to buy a brand new modern house, I mean clearly like it's a vibe, right? It's, yeah, it's, it's got it's a just cool look. like I'd over have to the see top it in person. But I if it's mine, I'm like in the cool, like clean. Are look. your guests wanting to put their hands on that? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's like smooth as a baby's bottom, but you know, it's still like cracked glass. It's cracked glass. Uh, I'm I'm definitely an out on that one. I'm All right. Would love to know your thoughts. Are you in or out? We got the haunted hotel, we got the lighthouse, and then we have the shattered glass, the cracked glass aesthetic staircase. Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching for Sean and myself. Until next time, we'll see you then. Take care.